Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Coming to you from Las Vegas, Nevada. That's right. Day two of SHOT Show is now in the books. Today was a huge day, January 24th. Why? Well, there was a argument before a three-judge panel down in the Ninth Circuit in the matter of Miller v. Bonta. I know you guys are all having a hard time keeping track of all of these. Miller v. Bonta is the twice successful challenge to California's assault weapon ban, which is now back before a three-judge panel of the Ninth Circuit for a second time. Unfortunately, we did not have an opportunity to sit down and geek out on all of the oral arguments today because we had a lot of business to conduct over at SHOT Show. I have had an opportunity to go back, take a look at some of the transcripts. And what I want to focus on here is I think they're beginning to tip their hands about how they're going to use the magazine ban case to screw us on both of these cases. And I'll explain in a moment and try to connect the dots. So today, let's slow it down for a couple minutes and let's talk about how the Ninth Circuit intends on using one case to screw you twice. Okay, today's January 24th. It was a big day because the Ninth Circuit three-judge panel heard oral arguments in the matter of Miller v. Bonta. Miller v. Bonta, of course, is the challenge to California's assault weapon ban. It is a challenge that has been successful twice at the trial court level, once at the three-judge panel, zero times before the full Ninth Circuit, was GVR'd by the United States Supreme Court, back down to the trial level where it was successful again and now sits before a three-judge panel. Inexplicably, you'll see that we also have to talk about the case of Duncan v. Bonta, which is the ca challenge to California's magazine ban, which has followed almost an identical path of Miller v. Bonta, but instead of coming back up from Judge Benitez to the three-judge panel like Miller did, Duncan instead was sucked up by the entire en banc panel of the Ninth Circuit, which was a grave concern for all of us. Now, I didn't have a chance to listen to all of the oral arguments, or really much of the oral arguments today, because we had a lot of events going on related to SHOT Show. However, I was able to go back, take a look at some of the transcripts, and rather than geek out on what each side argued, what I want to do is I want to focus on some questions that came from the bench because I think what you were going to see here is exactly how this three-judge panel is going to kind of happily take a back seat, let the full en banc panel rule on the magazine ban, which we all know how that's going to go. We all know how that's going to go. And then they will use that as their escape hatch to rule in a similar fashion in Miller v. Bonta. Translation, we're going to lose both of these things again like we did before. You remember that summer of 2022 when you actually thought Bruin was going to change the world? Well, not yet. Okay, and so we're actually going to, I believe, lose on both of them. And they're going to use the magazine ban case to screw you on the assault weapon ban case. Now, why do I say that? I'm going to read to you some of the quotes from certain justices so that you can understand the types of questions they were asking during argument. Judge Eric D. Miller asked how distinct the two cases, of course, that being Miller and Duncan, by stating, I looked at the briefs in Duncan and there are many of the same questions. If the state does in fact win in Duncan, doesn't that make it overwhelmingly likely they'll win here? So you see what he's saying there? He's saying, hey, listen, if they win on Duncan, then they basically have to rule for the state of California in Miller. Now, there was other concerns that came from the bench as well. Judge Jacqueline H. Nguyen, at a minimum, we'd have better guidance on what the analytical frameworks should look like. And of course, that's in response to, hey, listen, once the full on bike panel carves out, you know, the in common use for self-defense and more military like and all the other creative things that they'll just create out of uh, thin air, then this three judge panel will be able to accept that as the analytical framework without any true precedential value to it and in direct violation of the holdings of Bruin and McDonald and Heller and so on and so on. However, then there was this comment from yet the third judge. Judge Marcia S. Burzon pointed out, so these are not just abstractly connected there, okay? So they really do believe that these two cases are in fact joined at the hip. And truthfully, the legal principles upon which they're being argued, and yes, much of the case law in support, certainly of plaintiff's argument, is quite similar. However, the state of California responded to some of this by stating, we wouldn't object if this panel wished to hold this case pending resolution of the Duncan en banc proceeding, given the similarities between this case and Duncan. Yeah, I 
bet they wouldn't. They're basically saying, hey, we got no objection if you guys just want to put this on the back burner for now and defer to the full en banc panel. And let me ask any of you here, why would the full en banc panel of the Ninth Circuit have accepted review directly from the trial court level unless their intent was to not flip that ruling from Judge Benitez. So despite the fact that in the summer of 2022, when we thought the sun was gonna rise again, we are a long, long way from actually truly having inalienable rights and individual freedoms as our founding fathers first established. Both of these cases are likely gonna get tubed by the Ninth Circuit, and then they will be on petition yet again to the United States Supreme Court. And this joins in a long, long list of cases that this Supreme Court candidly must accept and must accept right now. We're gonna go ahead and link up everything down below so that you guys can geek out on it for yourself. Unfortunately, I believe that this is the exact game plan. The three judge panel is gonna just withhold ruling. The full en banc panel and Duncan will issue a ruling. The three judge panel will rubber stamp it using the same analytical framework that comes from Duncan and away we go and for California, no, you still live behind Gavin Newsom's Iron Curtain. Listen, if you guys got any other questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is right down there in the description box. Now, in the meantime, let's everyone remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself from Las Vegas, Nevada. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.